Hi everybody and welcome to the second part of LockyBot Analyzing where we will be doing spoofing of Guloader and LockyBot Command and Control Server with our own implementation in Python. Uh, if you missed the first part, uh, it's available also here on my GitHub page. And in the first part we were basically defeating uh, Guloader with uh, Windows Debugger, Remote Kernel Debugging and Lib Command and Control Server. But in this part, uh, why we, why we will be doing spoofing Guloder and LockyBot command control server. Uh, okay, during my analysis, the command and control server was still active. But uh, in case the command and control server becomes unreachable or down and we have served payload uh, and all necessary data, we can re-implement the command control functionality. Uh, very often, uh, it, it can happen very often that during your reversing or uh, analyzing and other stuffs, um, the command control server becomes unreachable. So I quite re highly recommend that you would try to download all necessary delivered payload and next stage payload uh, and uh, use it for uh, command and control server implementation because uh, it's quite easy and you have here many snippets for Python re-implementation and other stuffs so you can use it for neck for absolutely different samples. So I hope you will enjoy it. In this video, we were we are re-implementing the command and control server in Python 3. Uh, all needed files for command and control server Python implementation with uh, certificates are here uh, on this folder on my GitHub page. If you click on it, you can see that it's uh, already all prepared. You have here the basically Python implementation for command and control server for uh, Guloder and uh, command and control server implementation in Python for a LockBot. And here are the certificates. Basically, you can use, if you if you want to try it uh, by your own, you can use my certificate already generated by, but you can generate your own. I will show you how in this video. And in the web folder, you can see here is the encrypted LockBot uh, downloaded from Google Drive. Basically, this is the payload uh, which uh, Guloder will be downloading, decrypting, and uh, uh, it will run uh, this LockyBot, which is basically encrypted. You can also uh, serve encrypted LockyBot payload from Google Drive here. Basically, this is the link to the folder uh, the web I already show you. But um, I will show you how you can download this payload quite uh, uh, easy, but uh, it could uh, happen that it uh, will be unreachable when you will be trying to do what I'm showing here. So steps. Uh, first of all, we will be running Barshark, a processor, and trying to get network IOCs from running LockyBot sample. You can see the network IOCs here, but I want to show you how you can obtain this uh, IOCs. So I jump to our VM and uh, don't forget to use Winscribe or some other VPN. Uh, as I already told you in the first part, Winscribe is free and ten, for 10 gigabytes and I quite like it, but use whatever you want. But uh, don't forget that you are connecting the real command and control servers and we don't want to expose any uh, information about our uh, virtual lab or something like that. Okay, so first of all, run Wireshark and run process hacker. Here is the process hacker, here is the Wireshark. I have here two interfaces. You can see it here. So basically I want to choose the interface which uh, is able to connect to internet. And I think this is uh, it's, it's this one. Okay. And now it's time to run the uh, basically LockyBot sample. It's a Lagu, it's a Google wrap in VB6, but after that it will be LockyBot. Let's run it and check what happens. Again, it was covered in the part one, so if you missed it, just check it. Uh, basically, this uh, first sample uh, will uh, decrypt the uh, Google shellcode, and the Google shellcode will performing will be performing some anti-debug, anti-VM checks, and after that it's found the child process, and the child process will be doing the same, but after uh, the end, in the end, it will try to connect the Google Drive and uh, download the uh, LockyBot sample, encrypt it, and it will decrypt it and run it. So after you see, 
you, you will see in a few seconds that you try to communicate to some network. Network total bytes. Yeah, now suspend it. Suspend. Okay, and we suspend it. What we have here, uh, we can see now that something is already communicating. If you check the network, maybe here, you can see some IP address here, IP addresses of this process, and one for two. And if you check that in Varshark, uh, you can see it's somewhere here. Yep, here. Uh, here is the DNS. Basically, uh, it's a uh, it's performing DNS request for drive.google.com, and uh, IP address is one four two two five zero one eight six forty six. And you can see here is the TLS traffic. So basically, this, this is the HTTPS traffic to uh, Google Drive of our uh, GUI loader, uh, which is basically downloaded from the Google Drive, the uh, encrypted payload of Lottybot. Uh, so what we can do now, uh, we can uh, quite easily obtain the uh, uh, all your URL uh, from Process Hacker. Go to Process, uh, click on it, uh, go to Memory, and option strings extend that and okay and now filter contains and find something like dry.google.com okay and you can see it here and basically this is our uh url for downloading uh, the lucky bot sample in encrypted uh, format so just copy that and note it somewhere. Here, new notes. And this one. Oh, this one. And yes, we will uh, use it later. And what we got next, uh, basically you can resume. And probably that's all, maybe. Yeah, that's all. So you can terminate the process and check the bar shark. Uh, you can see here is the TLS traffic HTTPS for the for the uh, Google Drive uh, downloading the Locky bot, and here is something. Yes, here. Uh, after it uh, obtained the Google order obtains the uh, Locky bot in encrypted way, it decrypt it and uh, run it. So here is the communication of the lucky bot already decrypted and uh, it's running and communicating to its own command and control server. You can see it here. And if you follow this stream, you can see one thing which is really, really important and uh, it's covered uh, in my next steps. Uh, it's performing uh, something what I call a direct IP HTTP request. And it's quite uh, uh, harder to uh, spoof a direct IP HTTP request because it's not performing DNS, so we can't uh, just modify, for example, host file. Uh, we have to do uh, something um, more difficult, but I will show you in some, uh, I hope, easy way how we can uh, spoof uh, the IP address that we are, this IP address of command control server. And what is quite important here that uh, you can see the response is a content type of a text HTML. So I'm using the content type also in my implementation of uh, Python command and control server for this lucky bot communication. Uh, what I want to do next, we can basically uh, shut down this and just uh, run uh, PowerShell because we want to, um, you can see that the uh, view loader command control server for a payload de delivering is still active. So basically we can copy this URL and just download the uh, encrypted payload. It's already prepared here because I already downloaded it for you uh, here in a web folder and also you can download it here, www folder, uh, web, and it's here. Or you can just uh, 
click on this one and download it. But if you if you if it happened that it will be still active, you can uh, do what I will be doing now. Just run uh, PowerShell, and we can do something like that. Uh, variable request eq invoke web request uh, URL or URI will be okay. And this one, okay. It will take some time, probably. I don't know. Interfaces are up. Okay. So it's downloading the payload. Oh, maybe we can do it once again. Yep. And it's done. Don't know what, what was it before, but you can check it now. This is basically a PowerShell object. Yeah. And you can see it's an object uh, basically uh, about the uh, HTTP communication. And you can see here quite uh, interesting information about the communication to uh, a, um, command and control server for uh, Google, in this case, Google Drive. So you can print, for example, headers. And important one is for, we will be using this one, content type. Basically, the delivering is a content type of application of the stream. I will be using this content type in my implementation of a Python command and control server. And if you want to uh, just save the uh, content, because the content is the encrypted a lucky bot so you can do it like this uh, you can see for example here request and content but it's a uh, it's strange it's something like uh, if you want to see the type of the content i hope it's bytes and yeah it's a byte so by the array uh you can save it to some to file in the dot net uh, yep uh, i can do it like this uh system io file file and uh, method will be write write all bytes and here is path path will be uh, desktop xxx.bin and the content will be this one request content and here and it's here if you check that uh, in the hex editor and you can see uh, control A and you can see that the length is 106560 uh, if you check the PowerShell and the headers Uh, like this you can see that the content length is 106560. The same, yes, nice. Uh, if you check that you already uh, downloaded the same as I already prepared here, uh, we can calculate MD5 quite fast. MD5 hash, this one, MD5 hash, this one, and it's the same. Nice. So we successfully uh, downloaded the uh, delivered payload, uh, the encrypted lucky bot from the Google command control server, in this case, Google Drive, drive.google.com. Nice, I already prepared it here. It's necessary for implementation of the Python command control servers. And okay, so we can delete it because I already prepared it, but I wanted to show you how we can do it uh, on your own. And very important is to note somewhere the content type Okay, I hope we don't need this, uh, and we don't need this. Uh, okay, so 
Now we are somewhere here, network IOCs. We confirm that Google uh, drive.google.com was used for encrypted payload delivery for Google over command and control server. And this IP address is for command and control server ex for exfiltrating stolen data. Uh, Locky bot command and control server and it's performing the direct IP HTTP request. So implementation steps for Locky bot command control server, as I already told you, uh, there is a little problem that Lockbot is performing direct IP HTTP to command and control server. In this case, this IP address. Uh, external IP redirection could be quite difficult on Windows OS, so we can cheat a little like this. Uh, here, here is all, all already described. Uh, if you <laughs> if you do the redirection in a, a Linux, it's very very easy. You, you can do it with IP tables, but uh, in a Windows, it's quite strange. Uh, so I, I cheat like this, I will show you. Uh, for simplicity, we can avoid direct IP, HTTP traffic redirection. We can do it like that um, we will add a new IP address, this one, the command and control server of uh, Lockybot, con uh, uh, Lockybot uh, the IP address of command control server of Lockybot, to our already existing interface loopback. So our loopback interface will have after that, two IP assigned. This one, uh, basically, this is the normal IP address of Lubeck, and uh, this one. And we can do it with this uh, command, net sh. Copy this command, go to the here, run a command prompt as an administrator, and uh, edit. Yes, if you check, um, on, if you want to check now, that you already uh, assigned a second IP address for the loopback, you can do it with this command. And check the loopback interface, it's here. And you can see that you have uh, assigned this IP address, normal IP address, and this IP address, which is basically our Lockbot command control server. Nice. And uh, we also don't need any interfaces because we will be using only uh, a loopback and this is something like pseudo interface. So we can disable all the network adapters. Yes. And uh, now it's possible to run Python, not our command and control servers, uh, to listen on IP address because we have now new IP address of for, for loopback adapter for loopback interface. And implementation steps of for Gloader. Uh, basically, Gloader was uh, communicating uh, via HTTPS to Google to drive.google.com with TLS. So we must spoof the certificate for drive.google.com. Basically, we have to generate our own certificates for drive.google.com. Uh, how you can do it? Quite an easy way. Uh, we will be using OpenSSL. If you want to download the OpenSSL, you can uh, find the references here. And uh, if you want to download it for uh, Windows, you can uh, just check internet and there are many, many links for downloading for downloading for Windows. Okay, I will install it. I want to install it to my folder Inferno desktop and OpenSSL. Okay, next, next. Uh, to the same uh, folder here, next, and install. Okay, no, we don't want to donate now, maybe later. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, OpenSSL bin, and here is the OpenSSL. Just run a command prompt here and copy this command. Uh, I will explain this command. Copy, and here. Basically, you will be generating new X509 certificate uh, in a format of PEM and uh, with the argument key out and uh, out, you basically are specifying that you want to have your private key and certificate, like your public key, in one file which is called cert.pem. Nice. What is important? Uh, country named. <laughs> Nothing. It, it, it's not important. US, a US, a US, uh, XSX, XXX. But this is very important. Common name. Common name has to be drive. 
www.google.com drive.google.com uh, enter and email address blah 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 okay and we have our certificate here check it here and it's uh, here just check it open it hex editor and you can see that it contains also the private key and the public certificate the server certificate certificate so i want to also create two new files two new files and one for private key because we will be using the private key after that for uh, Varshark because we we can after that with our own Python implementation to control server decrypt the traffic to the uh, drive.google.com uh, caused by our malware sample which is very nice here and uh, certificate public key here here and now this one save as file save as uh, desktop uh, to our folder open ssl open bin and save it as brief key dot pm save it and this one will be file save as and this one will be a server dot pm save it okay now you have all you need just copy that these three files copy and paste it to the folder www and here and yep uh now we have to do another thing because um as you saw uh, uh the malware was uh performing dns request uh, for drive.google.com and we want to to redirect or resolve this dns drive.google.com to our ip address and for the simplicity we can basically uh, redirect it to our new uh, assigned loopback ip address which is this one so you can see it here is that we have to add record to host file to ready dns drive.google.com just copy this and modify the host file or windows os here find the hosts file <sighs> here and open it one on one editor and this one and add this entry okay it's not nice <laughs> and save it yep and basically we will be resolving dns request for drive.google.com to this ip address so all our uh, both our http uh, or our python implementation of command and control server will be listening on this new loopback ip address for the simplicity yes okay and now uh, you, we can check the implementation of Python command and control server. Uh, basically, this one is quite uh, easy. Uh, this is the, uh, you can see the HTTP web server post. It's uh, processing the, the command and control server of LockyBot because it's performing, the malware is performing post requests uh, to the IP address of this one. So basically, this uh, Python snippet is quite uh, easy of understand. You can see that uh, our uh, Python script is listening on our new assigned loopback uh, IP address and on this port 80. And if you uh, if uh, this server is uh, get it, it, if this server obtains post HTTP request, it will basically send the headers and headers are here, so it will respond 200 OK. Uh, HTTP response and you can see that content type will be uh, text uh, HTML as we saw in Marshark uh, before and uh, content length will be hello world because I am writing hello world to the body of the uh, response 200 OK. So basically that's all. We will be only uh, uh, un uh, responding with 200 OK and hello world. But uh, it's quite easy. Easy one. But this one is more complicated. Uh, check it. It's basically HTTP uh, uh, S web server get, 
and that's uh, for the Guler, for the drive.google.com communication. And what you can see here, the server is again listening on IP address of the loopback, newly assigned, and on port 443. But what is important here, it's using our the certificate we just generated here, the cert pen. And uh, what you can see here, that we have specified the SSL version uh, like TLS 1.2. And here are the ciphers. Check the ciphers. This is very, very important. And this is the reason why we can decrypt the traffic to drive.google.com later in Wireshark, because I specified here that um, the client can only use, uh, the malware can only use this uh, specified ciphers uh, for TLS 1.2. No uh, Diffie Hellman, no LP curve Diffie Hellman, because these uh, Diffie Hellman stuffs are not decryptable in Wireshark. So I specified something uh, what we can uh, after that use uh, for decryption. And another important thing, uh, you can see that our server is processing GET requests and it will set the headers. Basically, again, 200 uh, OK response and content type will be application octet stream as we already saw in PowerShell where we were, where, when we were um, requesting the real Google Drive and, and headers. And you can see here that uh, after the headers ends, I will add the file encrypted locky bot downloaded google drive bin the encrypted uh, locky bot bytes i read it and append it to the body to uh, response to get request and it's all so um i want to show you one thing again um uh, this is there is one very important step here uh if you want to run this uh, http uh, server get this is HTTPS server okay run it and what happened uh, what will happen if you now try to communicate to Google Drive drive.google.com HTTP you can try this again are noted already everything should work now the redirection and our stuffs but what is quite you can see that uh, in a network that our Python is listening on uh, port 443 and this loopback IP address. Nice. But if you now try to perform, uh, like, um, okay, we can use again this one, but for example, it doesn't matter what is after the, what is the URL, yeah, it, it must be drive.google.com because I'm process my script is processing whatever is here, like this one, this one, and you can try it. What you can get, what you get is the underlying connection was closed, could not establish the trust relationship for the SSL TLS secure channel. And why you can see this? Because uh, it's serving our server public certificate, this one and it's not trusted with the operation Windows operation system. So how you can do it to be trustable for the Windows? Nice and easy. Uh, we can go do it like cert mgr.msc, go to uh, trusted root certificates and certificates. And here, all task import and we basically install the server certificate we just generate for drive.google.com and it will be trustable uh, desktop www and here show all and server pen open uh, next trusted certificate authorities yes next finish yes and it's all and now do it again and voila everything is fine we have here content the same way and and you can see it was responded by our uh, Python server <laughs> and certificate is trusted and nice and easy okay so what you can do now, you can see here, it's logging the 
request. So we have this request. Okay. And now we can close it and we can run it again. Uh, open command prompt here and run. Uh, now is basically you are now here. Import public cert. Yeah, we already did it. And finally, jump to it. Run both command and control Python servers. Okay, run then and go to the real work. Uh, Revivesharp, loopback, process hacker. Yep. So let's jump to it. Okay. So first of all, we will be running our HTTP web server post. Get, get. This one is processing the GUloader command and control server traffic and HTTP server uh, post and this one is processing the Lockybot command and control server communication. Nice one. Uh, what do we got here? Yep, interface is nothing. Nice. Uh, now it's time to run Wireshark and processor is already running. You can see in the network that uh, uh, our Python scripts, one, uh, both are uh, listening on IP address of the newly assigned uh, uh, IP address for loopback and port 80 for a lucky bot and 443 for uh, Google communication to drive.google.com. Nice. Go to process. Okay. And here just attach some loopback. I have here npk loopback adapter. It's nice. And okay. Now, yep, we just just want to run the original sample of LuckyBot, the wrapped Gulliver, and after that LuckyBot, exe, yes. Uh, so again, this one is running. This one is running. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Just run it and check the Wireshark and check that the smallver sample is absolutely satisfied. It will communicate to its uh, command and control servers, which are mine already, and everything should work. And you can see spawn new process. Uh, Gloader again, and it will try to download the uh, LuckyBot, encrypted LuckyBot from my command and control server, and I will serve it to him. It will decrypt it and run it, and the LuckyBot will communicate again to my command and control server. And yes, we can see it in Wireshark now, oh, nicely. And now you can suspend it. Suspend it and leave it because we'll be using it later. Uh, just check here. Uh, we can stop the, to the, the the capturing and just check it here. We can see we uh, successfully uh, captured or served our payload. You can see here is the URL for uh, drive.google.com and we served our payload. And here is the post. You can see how uh, it's already three times. The, uh, the lucky bot post uh, of uh, exfiltrating data from this operation system. This is the URL. Nice. Uh, and uh, here is everything. Everything is in Wireshark now. You can see here is the HTTP request. And you can see quite nice that I'm redirecting all from this IP to this IP and nicely. This is the uh, communication uh, to LockyBot command control server and this is the Google Drive, the Google order trying to download uh, the encrypted uh, LockyBot payload. But what is quite important here, you can see here is client hello, yep, and it's requesting drive.google.com. Here you can see DNS request because we modified the host file so no DNS is performed. Yeah, it's a host file, it's an internal file that uh, it has like a, a more uh, priority priority uh, than normal DNS. So uh, you can see here server and that's what be quite, uh, will be nice. 
here you can see the certificate uh, certificate and certificate and here here and maybe subject subject and you can see it here <laughs> name us 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 x x x x x x drag and email address blah 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 that's our certificate and it's trusted nice but what is uh, better here and uh, more important then we can decrypt this tls traffic because it has uh, our public certificate and we have the private key and I, as I already told you, my Python implementation specified the TLS ciphers, so I know that it's uh, I'm I'm able to decrypt the traffic. So go to Edit uh, Preferences, Recycle Keys, Add New Key, and just find the new one, Private Key. Open. Yes. And okay. Just find here, for example, and right click, and decode S, and yes, TLS. Okay, and you can see it here, decrypted. If you want to check it, that I'm not lying, just go to follow and TCP stream. Okay, something goes wrong. Okay, so again, follow, follow uh, TL stream, sorry. TL stream. Follow TL stream. If you follow the HTTP stream, I don't know why you can't see here the response. But if you try to follow TL stream, the TL stream is decrypted. So just right click, follow, and TL stream. And that's it. Easy win. You can see clear text get request. And you can see here the response. And here is the response body. And it's our served. Uh, Payload. You can confirm it uh, quite easily. Just switch here and hex dump, and you can see here is starting the payload. And if you check this one with the www web and encrypted payload, check the bytes here. Uh, B one B O E two. B one B O E two. Nice. And it was easy. Decrypted traffic. We have all. Okay, so now you can uh, quit without saving. We don't need it anymore. Uh, we don't need this anymore too. And go back to the process hacker. And what we can do now, basically this process has already uh, inside the decrypted locky bot sample. So again, we can um, click on it, memory, and check the address. 4000 this one uh, is the uh, address which was used for the process hollowing and uh, decrypting the locky board and other stuffs. And uh, this is it. But if you now try, check it the size 1, uh, 132, 1.32 megabytes, and just try to save it. Downloads. There is one quite uh, mm, uh, quite uh, I don't know how you could say it um, something is strange here because if you check what you just download just uh, dump check the size 712 okay and you have here the two times more uh, so why you are you dumping only this and if you check the strings you can't see here any locky bot related strings nothing okay and i tell you why just check here the strange protection basically you can show you can see this memory nicely you can see this memory nicely but check this one error due to protection graphics not all the requested bytes could be copied okay check the Strange protection. There is one quite a simply easy solution. Just change the protection. And we can change it, for example, to page execute read write, no problem. Okay. And now check it. And if you check it, there is already some strings. 
Yep, there are strings uh, related to a lucky bot I will show you later. But now what you can do is basically again save and save it again. Uh, check that. Uh, for example, in one of editor, it has the MZ header. And yep, some, some strings are here. Yep, so just check the strings. Uh, strings and what you can see here there are plenty of related strings to lucky bot you can see it here many 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 this was the the uh, memory range uh, which has the strength protection okay nice 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 and also here Check it. <laughs> it. This is our command and control server for the lucky bot. Nice. And but what to do next? Just copy this, and we can basically terminate this one. Terminate. We don't need it anymore. And uh, copy this one. I go to tools. I already prepared tools, and we will be using again the arm upper excellent tool from the hasher eight. Very very useful tool. Because what I wanted to do now. If you check that, it's uh, somehow corrupted. If you want to open it with Beaver, you will get uh, quite a messy things here. <laughs> Imports, yep, so messy. And that's because this is basically dumped from memory and it's still virtually mapped. So how you can repair it, quite an easy way, with PE Unmapper from Hashers8, PE Unmapper. Let's check the uh, arguments here. Okay, so input file in will be cockfighter, cockfighter exe. Uh, base will be, if you remember, the base was 400000, and the output file will be lucky bot unpacked exe. Okay. And you can check that I don't spe it didn't specify the mode because the default mode is uh, here. It's a uh, virtual to raw unmapping. So that's basically what we need. And you can see here <laughs> one or uh, something little more than 100 kilobytes. So it's it's nice. And if you check it in Fever, you will get something like this. And check the imports. Nice. It's repaired. Unmapped. Virtually unmapped. Nice. You can check the strings here. Check the strings and what you got here. Mm, here, something strings, yep, some SQL. And here is the <laughs> here is the again the uh, command and control right address. Uh, for Lockbot, and uh, there basically your exfiltrate data will be posted. And here are some uh, strings related to uh, password stealing, credential stealing, and other stuff. Okay, so basically, this is sample which is ready for reversing and other stuff. And what is quite uh, nice, copy that, it's not only ready for reversing. It's also ready for debugging. Check it. Nice, nice, here, here. Just run it. Okay, I didn't catch it. Maybe many. Here, copy that again and run it. Yeah, I have this one, sorry. You can see it's running here. Suspend. Yep. And check the network. Oh, it's not here. So it's not posting the data now. But uh, you can see here, it's runnable. No error. Ready for debugging, ready for re reversing, whatever you want. Also, you can still uh, use the uh, our own implement, Python implementation or for a command and control server. And I think that was all.
checking repair, unpack unlocking board with PE bar and strings, and a decrypted communication in Wireshark. Everything what we did and we already saw. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, I hope you learn new stuff and new tricks. Um, and uh, I will see you in the next part uh, where we will be doing something uh, very, very similar. You can see it here spoofing your and Locky Bot again, but we will be using not, not our own implementation in Python. We will be using Inetium and Burp Suite. Uh, basically, you, we will be using Remnox, uh, which is Linux, as a default gateway, and we'll be using Inetsim and Burp Suite. Uh, it's much easier because we don't need uh, to uh, pro to program our own implementation in Python. We can use uh, these two very very nice tools. So thank you for watching, and uh, see you on the next video.